Okay, so the question says the quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of the sides A, B, B, C, C, D, and D A of a quadrilateral A, B, C, D is. So let us draw any quadrilateral like that. So this is a quadrilateral. The sides are, so this is A, B, C, and D. So the sides are A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A. He says joining the midpoints of them. So let's have the midpoints. Let's say the midpoint of A, B is E. Midpoint of B, C is F. Midpoints of D, E, C, D is B, E, F, G and midpoints of A, B is H. So let us join these two midpoints, these four midpoints. If you join these midpoints, so clearly it is again looking like a parallelogram, and this is what is a theorem also. This is what is a property of the equal uh, quadrilaterals that if in a quadrilateral the midpoints are joined, particularly for parallelograms, if in a parallelogram the midpoints are joined, then the created quadrilateral is again a parallelogram. So that is the right answer, a parallelogram, only option number C. Now he says, suppose triangle ABC be a right triangle, right triangle, right angled triangle where angle A equal to 90. So we are supposed to draw this. Let us draw the figure. So this is, let's say, that right triangle that we are talking about. And the tri triangle ABC as right angle triangle where angle A equal to 90. So the angle A to be 90. Let's say this is C, this is B. So this is your right triangle. And AD perpendicular BC. So let's draw a perpendicular from A to D, that is AD. And if it is a perpendicular, then these two angles should be 90 degrees. If triangle ABC is equal to 40.5 root 3 centimeter square, here the area is given. Let's say area of triangle ABC, area of triangle ABC is given out to be 40.5 root 3 centimeter square. This is what is the area given. Then they say triangle ACD is area is 10 centimeter square. So area of triangle ACD is equal to 10 centimeter square. This is the next value given then and AC is equal to 9. So the complete length of AC is given here. That is 9 centimeter and then the length of BC. So we are supposed to find out the length of BC. So this particular side's length is unknown. We are supposed to find this C. We have been given the area. So what we can do is we can uh, use the formula of area of a triangle. That is half of base into height. The height will be treated as AB here and base will be treated as AC. Base already given to us and area is also given to us. So we can find out the side uh, the the base of the side ab and then by using pythagoras law we can again find the side of bc so what we're going to do we're going to use the formula of area of a right triangle that is half of base into height here in this particular uh, triangle the base is nothing but your b uh, ac that is 9 into height is nothing but ab which is unknown by now is equal to area of the triangle has been given as 40.5 root 3 centimeter square. So this is what we have made. We have created the area from the expression itself. Now we can find out this. So if we solve this particular equation, we can clearly get the AB's value as 2 by 9 into 40.5 root 3, okay, which is nothing but 9 root 3 centimeter. So clearly the AB's length has come. That is 9 root 3 centimeter. We can write down here also 9 root 3 centimeter. Now we are supposed to find out BC as this is a right triangle triangle. So obviously the Pythagoras theorem is always in the scene. What is that? The Pythagoras theorem is always in the scene for a right triangle triangle. Pythagoras theorem, which states that hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square. In our question, the hypotenuse is nothing but BC. So BC square is equal to base is nothing but AC. So AC square plus perpendicular is nothing but AB. So AB square, we have all those values except for the BC which can be calculated as AC square, AC we already know that is 9, plus AB square, AB we, all, we just calculated to be 9 root 3 whole square. If we solve this further, this is going to be 81 plus 81 into 3, 81 into 3, that comes out to be ultimately 324, BC square is 324. So the BC value will be simply under root of 324 and how much is that? That is simply 18 centimeters. So there where the BC's value has come, it comes out to be 18 centimeters. Let's see where it is this available. This is available in option number B. So it becomes the right answer. Now, in the next question, he say, O is the ortho center of triangle ABC. Angle ABC is equal to 50, then angle BOC is equal to what? So clearly he has given the idea about a right about a triangle. So let us create the triangle first, then we can understand what all values are there. So let's have the triangle. This is what this is a triangle looking like. So we have A, B, C, and he states that O, 
that O is the ortho center. Okay. So what is O? Uh, whenever what is an ortho center? Ortho center is the midpoint, is the meeting point of the perpendicular bisectors of all the angles. Okay. So let us draw perpendicular bisectors from B to D. Perpendicular bisector means that the other side will be uh, bisected and it will, it will be treated as a 90 degree. Then from C to E, let us join. This is again perpendicular and bisector. And then from A to F, let's say like that. And this is your O, which is the ortho center. This is the O point where, where this is meeting becomes the ortho center. Okay. So this is how it is calculated. Now let us put the values. Okay. Now which are which all values given to us? Angle BAC. Angle BAC is given to us as 50 degrees. So angle BAC is given to us 50 degree. Okay. And we are supposed to find out the angle BOC. So we are supposed to calculate this particular value. So let us see the expression. So let us take one by one. We are supposed to find out BOC. Let us take the smaller triangle first. That is triangle ABD. Let us triangle ABD. Let us take triangle ABD. What is happening in triangle ABD? If you have a closer look at this, in triangle ABD, angle A plus angle D plus angle ABD should be 180 degree. That is the law of angle sum of a triangle. Angle sum of a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. So that's what we have used here. Now, in this particular form, angle A is already given to us as 50 plus angle D's value can be also uh, seen. Angle D is nothing but a 90 degree because it is a perpendicular bisector. So, angle D's value is also 90 degree plus angle ABD can be calculated. So, plus angle ABD is equal to 180 degree. So, using this, we can calculate angle ABD to be 180 minus 50 plus 90. That is 180 minus 40. 150 minus 140, that is nothing but ABD is equal to 40 degree. This is the first thing that we have calculated. We have calculated this angle ABD to be 40 degrees. So this much angle is 40 degree. We have just calculated. Now let's see the other part of it. Now uh, let us take triangle AOB. If you take triangle AOB, what is happening in triangle AOB? See, again, we can use that angle sum property where angle BAO plus angle ABD plus angle AOB is equal to 180 degree. Again, the same law. That is angle sum of a triangle is always equal to 180 degree. Here also we know some values. We know the value of uh, our angle uh, BAO. Angle BAO is going to be half of angle BAC because this is uh, the ortho center has got a line which, which bisects the angles. Okay. So if angle BAO, that is angle A is 50 degrees. So angle BAO will be half of 50. That is 25 degree plus angle ABD. Angle ABD we just calculated in the last step to be 40 degree plus angle AOB. Okay. So clearly the angle AOB is unknown. So let us write it like that. A angle AOB equal to 180 degree. Okay. If we solve this further, the value of angle AOB can be calculated as 180 minus 25 plus 40. That is 180 minus uh, 65, which is nothing but 180 minus 65 is nothing but your 115. So that's what is the angle of angle AOB has come. Now, similarly, we can use for use to find angle AOC as well. Okay, the similar law can be uh, treated to the same uh, triangle and uh, triangle AOC and then angle AOC can be calculated. So we can just write here. Similarly, we can calculate the triangle AOC and angle AOC value. Angle AOC is in the same way is coming out to be 115 degree. Angle AOC is coming out to be 115 degree. Now, now we can add the three angles as angle AOB plus angle AOC plus angle BOC that is the complete circle angles the complete circle angles are added up and obviously complete circle angle is equal to 360 degree we have got these values and angle AOB is 1.5 angle AOC is also 115 plus angle BOC is equal to 360 degree which ultimately gives angle BOC's value as 360 minus 230 that is nothing but 130 degree so that is the final angle BOC calculated with this method and the right answer comes out to be option number C. Now, the question says, two circles of radius 9 cm and 2 cm respectively have center X and Y. So, let us draw those circles. Then he says, X, Y is equal to 17. Circle of radius R cm with center Z touches the two given circle externally. So, there are three circles actually which are touching each other externally. Let us draw those three circles. Let's say this is the first one. And let's say this is the second one. Two circles are touching actually. One is the circle which is touching both the circles like this. Okay. So let us start doing that. Two circles of radius 9 and 2 centimeters. So let's have the first circle center as X. Second circle has got center of Y. And the third circle has got a center of Z. He says 
two circle of radius nine centimeter and two centimeter. So let's say this is the circle with radius nine centimeters. So this value is nine, and we don't know the rest part. Similarly, this value from x to y we can write x y where this this much part is nine, and the third circle has got a radius of two. So this much part is two, and then we can join it till z, which we don't know about. Okay. So <clears throat> now let us assume that our these part. Let us assume that our these part. Uh, is e are obviously the radius of the circle third circle let us assume the radius of the third circle to be r okay so let's assume the radius of the third circle to be r which is already given find r so now what we can do is see uh, obviously this is going to be a 90 degree because he has said angle x z y is 90 degree so angle x z y is 90 degree so clearly this is making a right angle triangle here if you have a closer look at this this is making triangle x y z is nothing but a right angle triangle at angle z so clearly a Pythagoras theorem comes in the scene. Again, the Pythagoras theorem, Pythagoras theorem comes in the scene where perpendicular, where hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. The hypotenuse of triangle x, y, z is nothing but x, y itself. So we can write x, y square is equal to uh, x, z square plus y, z square. This is what is the Pythagoras theorem in the scene. Now, how much is x, z? See, in the x, z, from this xz is nothing but a combination of 9 plus r so it's going to be 9 plus r whole square is plus what is yz yz is again the combination of 2 plus r so it's 2 plus r whole square that is what is going to be xy square and xy value is already given in the question that is 17 centimeter so we can write as 17 square to this now this is what is the expression that we have which are which is supposed to be solved for r let us solve it. So we can open this particular 9 plus r whole square by the application of a plus b whole square. What is a plus b whole square is nothing but a square plus b square plus 2ab. If we open like that, we're going to reach to the number 81 plus r square plus 2 into 9 into 81, 2 into 9 into r rather, 2 into 9 into r plus the uh, 2 plus r whole square can again be opened by the same formula. So it's going to be 4 plus r square plus 2 into 2 into r that is 4r is equal to 289 okay let us solve this further if you solve this further we're going to reach to a final equation as the final equation is coming out as r square plus 11r minus 102 equal to 0 so clearly we are supposed to solve this particular equation which can be solved by sridharacharya so if we solve it by sridharacharya we are getting the r two factors as r plus 17 and r minus 6 okay equal to 0 so clearly the two values of r are coming as one is minus 17 and r one is 6 so clearly minus 17 cannot be taken so we will take r as 6 centimeters so that's what was asked in the question and where is the option available of 6 centimeter it is option number d and becomes the right answer okay then he says in triangle abc ad is the internal bisector of angle a so let us make the triangle first so here goes the triangle this is goes the triangle okay in triangle a B and C. These are the these are this is the, these are the vertices of the triangle. He says AD is the internal bisector of angle A. So let's have an internal bisector of angle A. Internal bisector means the two the two part of the angle will be equal. Okay, and AD is the bisector of them, and it is a perpendicular bisector. Internal bisector of angle A creates a ninety degree <coughs> angle A meeting the side BC at D. So it has met the side BC at D. If BD is equal to five, let us write down the value. BD is equal to five. And BC is equal to 7.5. So this whole value is 7.5. So clearly how much will be the CD? It will be 7.5 minus 5. That is 2.5 here. Okay. Then AB is to AC. Then we are supposed to find out the ratio AB is to AC. So if you clearly look at the question, we can clearly look at the triangle and let us try to compare triangle ABD and triangle ACD. If we have a closer look at triangle ABD, we'll be able to understand that angle a angle b a d is equal to angle c a d because the internal bisector has bisected both angles and clearly we can also say that angle a d b is equal to angle a d c is equal to 90 degree as stated it is an internal bisector so it is creating an angle of 90 degree now by by using angle angle axiom of similarity angle angle axiom of similarity we can say that triangle ABD is similar to triangle ACD. We have used the angle-angle axiom to prove angle triangle ABD is similar to triangle ACD. 
and when the two triangles are single, single similar then their their uh, proportionate sides are also the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal so ab by ac will be equal to ab by ac will be equal to 5 by 2.5 the proportionate sides are there okay ab by ac will be equal to 5 by 2.5 which is nothing but 2 by 1 ab by ac equal to 2 by 1 and that's what they have asked in the question what is the ratio of ab by bc the answer is option number a 2 is to 1 Okay, now the question is the line segment A, B and C, D intersect at O. So let us create the line segments. There is a line segment A, B and there is one more line segment C, D. Let's create like this C, D. They intersect at O. So let's say this point is O, the center point. OF is the internal bisector of obtuse angle BOC. So the angle O, B, O, C is an obtuse angle. Obtuse angle is are the angle which are more than 90 but less than 180. So angle BOC, he says, is more than 90 but less than 180. And OF is the internal bisector. So let's create the internal bisector. Let's have the internal bisector like this. So it, it goes till F. So OF is the internal bisector. That means this particular angle, angle COF, is equal to the other part that is FOB. That's why it is internal bisector. Now, O is the internal bisector of acute angle AOC. Angle AOC is an acute angle and they are saying O is an internal bisector. So let us join OEC, OE together. So if we join right like this, so this is your E point and O is the internal bisector. So these two angles are also equal. Okay. Now this is what is the figure as states. He, if angle BOC is equal to 130 degree, they have already given the measure of angle BOC to be 130 degree. Okay, so if angle BOC is 130 degree, then their small parts are half of 130, one half of 130, half of 130 is 65. That means this very part is 65 degree and this very part is also 65 degree. This much is already clear from the figure itself. We can write that also. See, angle BOF is equal to angle COF because uh, the OF is the internal bisector as said in the question itself. So each will be equal to half of the whole angle BOC that is 130 by 2 which is equal to 65 degrees that we have already shown in the diagram itself. Now he wants us to calculate the measure of FOC the measure of FOC for that what we can do we need to find out the AOC value and then using that AOC value we will be doing the half to find out the, the second part of AOC and then we'll be able to add. So what can we do here? See, angle O is the, as written, O is the internal bisector of angle AOC. So, ang let's say angle AOC is equal to X. Okay, let us assume, let us assume angle AOC is equal to X. Then angle AOE is equal to angle COE as given in the question, internal bisector is equal to X by 2, half of the whole angle AOC. But if you clearly see, AB is a straight line. So, that means in a straight line, the linear pairs make an angle of 180 degrees. So what we can say about line AB that angle AOC plus angle BOC, angle AOC plus angle BOC, that is AOC plus BOC will be 180 degree because it is a complete line. So these two angles should make a linear pair that is 180 degree. Okay. We already know that we have assumed the AOC to be X. <clears throat> so AOC will be X plus angle BOC. We already know the angle BOC's value is given in the question itself, 130 degree is equal to 180 degree. From where we can calculate the X value to be 180 minus 30, that 130, that is 50 degree. So X value or the angle AOC value has come out to be 50 degree. Now we were supposed to calculate angle AOC is already there, but angle AOC was bisected by the side OE. So clearly we can say angle EOC is equal to angle EOC is equal to simply 50 by 2 that is 25 degree okay 50 by 2 that is 25 degree so this very angle this very angle in the figure has come out to be 25 degree and this very angle in the figure we already calculated to be 65 degree now clearly we were supposed to find out angle FOC which is nothing but the sum of angle COE or the EOC plus angle COF Okay, and we know the value of COE that is EOC that is 25 degree plus we also know the value of angle COF that is 65 degrees. So 65 plus 25 makes it 90 degree. So that is the measure of angle FOC 90 degree and it is available in option number A. Now he says in a triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle are the triangles in which the two sides are equal. Let's create that ABC triangle and angle C is 90 degree. So let's have this as C and have a 90 degree 
AC is equal to 5. So let's have A here and B here. So AC is equal to 5. So if AC is equal to 5, then BC is equal to also 5 because in, in a right angle triangle, uh, any side cannot be equal to hypostraneous. So two sides that are equal are the base and the perpendicular itself, that is AC and BC. So clearly we can write AC is equal to BC is equal to 5 centimeter because it is an isosceles triangle. Angle C is already 90 degree. So we are supposed to find out the side AB. So clearly we can see there is a right angle triangle where the Pythagoras theorem can always come in the scene. The Pythagoras theorem can always come, come in the scene which says hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. Here the hypotenuse is AB. So AB square is equal to base and perpendicular are both equal. That is BC square plus AC square. So let's put down the value. AB square is equal to 5 square plus 5 square which is nothing but 25 plus 25 that is 50. So AB value can be root 50 which can be written as root of 2 into 25 and 25 comes out so it becomes 5 root 2 centimeter. So that is the value of uh, the uh, AB that is 5 root 2 centimeter. It should be in the option number C 5 root 2 centimeter. Okay. Now the question says in triangle ABC D and E are points on AB and AC respectively so that D parallel BC. So let us make it. This is a triangle. Okay. This is the big triangle A B C. He says D and E are the points on AB and AC. So on D there is on AB there is D. On AC there is E. Let us join them together. He says D and says that D is parallel to BC. So this D is parallel to BC. And D divides the triangle ABC into two parts of equal area. That means the the area of the triangle ADE is equal to the area of the quadrilateral BDCE. And both the areas are just half of the bigger triangle ABC. Okay, this is what they have stated. We can write it down here. Triangle ABC is equal to twice of, or rather we can say an area of triangle ADE plus area of triangle area of quadrilateral DEBC and similarly triangle ADE's area is equal to triangle the tri is equal to quadrilateral DEBC's area is equal to half of triangle ABC's area because they have divided into equal parts. Then we have supposed to uh, calculate the ratio of AD is to BD. This is what is the question. Now, if we see at the look at the figure carefully, we are, we know the area's connection. So we can simply write area of triangle ABC divided by ABC divided by area of triangle ADE is equal to 2 by 1 as stated earlier also. Now, now there's a point that ratio of the area of two similar triangles equal to the square of the uh, square of the ratio of their corresponding side. This is the theorem. The ratio of the area of the two similar triangle that is is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding side. So there we have got two triangles where the ratio the where the, they are similar. Okay, because they are similar, the angle A is common to both of them, and angle angle A is common to both of them, and side BC is parallel to DE. We can write down here side BC is parallel to DE. So we can say angle. B is equal to angle D and the reason is corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles in the parallelogram, in the parallel lines concept, corresponding angles. So angle D, B is equal to angle D and angle A is equal to angle A. They, the, these two angles are common. So clearly we can write that triangle ADE is similar to triangle ABC. So these two triangles are similar and then we have a property of two similar triangles that the ratio of the area of the two similar triangles is equal to the ratio, the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. So, which is equal to AB by AD. The square of the ratio of the two sides is AB by AD whole square. This is where the area connection and the area is given as 2 by 1. So, we can write 2 by 1 here. Now, using this, we are supposed to calculate AD by BD. So, we, we clearly know that AB by AD is now root 2 by 1. But we are supposed to calculate AD by BD. So we need to convert this. So how we can write AB? AB can be written as AD plus DB because AD is the sum of AD plus DB. And the AD is as it is. AD is also equal to root 2 by 1. If we divide the left hand side by AD, then it becomes 1 plus DB by AD is equal to uh, root 2 by 1, which ultimately gives us DB by AD. DB by AD is root 2 by 1 minus 1 that is nothing but 1 
that is nothing but root 2 minus 1 upon root 2 minus 1 upon 1. Now, but we need the swapped version, the multiplicative inverted version. So let us multiplicative, let us find out the multiplicative inverse. That is, we swap it. So it becomes 1 upon, we are trying to find AD divided by BD. That will be a multiplicative inverse, will be just multiplicative inverse of this. That is 1 upon root 2 minus 1. That will be 1 upon, that will be nothing but 1 upon root 2 minus 1 like this. So it will be 1 upon root 2 minus 1. Okay, let's see where is this option available. 1 upon root 2 minus 1. Let us see where it is available. It is available in option number B. So it becomes the right answer. Now he says, in the given figure, A, B and L M are chords of a circle with center O as the figure is already given such that O X equal to O Y. So we can mark it here. O X is equal to O Y. O X perpendicular L M that is already marked here as a perpendicular sign. To find the length of then find the length of lm if ab is equal to 4.7 centimeter so ab's length is already given to be 4.7 centimeter now we are supposed to see the figure carefully and if you see the figure figure carefully you can understand that there is a theorem called as that chords which are equidistant from the center of a circle from the center of a circle circle are also equal okay this is a theorem that that when a, when there are two chords in a circle and the distance between those two chords in from the center of the circle is equal that is what is given here ox is equal to oy okay that the ox and oy are nothing but the distance of these chords from their center and he has already said it, it to be equal so when this this happens then the chords length are also equal that means following that the theorem we can say that both the chords are of equal length that is ab is equal to lm and we were supposed to find up lm so lm value is equal to ab's value which is nothing but 4.7 centimeter that is the right answer 4.7 centimeter option number b now x and y are centers of circle of radius 6 centimeter and 3 centimeter respectively there are two circles x y is equal to 15 x and y if joined that is equal to 50 so let us draw these circles first this is a circle and this is one more circle and the centers of the circle are x and y. He says the radius of the first circle is radius of this first circle is let us six centimeter. Radius of the circle is three centimeter. The distance of x y he has given out to be fifteen centimeter. That is already written. Z is the center of the circle of the radius r, which touches the above circle externally. So there is one more circle which is touching both these circles externally like this, and the center of that circle is marked as z. And the radius of the circle is marked as r. So let us say this is r. And to this point to this point will obviously be 6 because this will be the circle radius of the circle. And if we join y, z also, then we clearly know that from y to this point is going to be 3. And from here to here will be r. So this is the figure that is drawn with us. Given that x, z, y is equal to 90 degrees. So let us mark this angle as 90 degree. Then value of r is we are supposed to find out the value of r. So if you see the triangle carefully, this is nothing but a right angle triangle, right angle at z. So if there is a right angle triangle in the scene, we can obviously use a theorem called as Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem can be brought in the scene which says hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. So here in this triangle x, z, y, you can clearly see the hypotenuse is going to be the side x, y. So x, y square is equal to y, z square plus x, z square. This is what the equation becomes. x, y value is 15. So 15 square is equal to y, z value is r plus 3 whole square plus xz value is r plus 6 whole square. So clearly we have an expression to solve. If we are able to solve this, we will be able to answer. Let us start. 15 square is nothing but 225. r plus 3 whole square can be opened by the formula a plus b whole square is equal to a square. a plus b is whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. Let us open it. So it is going to be r square plus b square is 9 plus 2 into r into 9 plus a r plus 6 whole square can again be opened by the same formula. So it becomes r square plus 6 square plus 2 into r into 6. If you solve this further, this becomes r square and r square becomes 2 r square plus 9 and 36 become 45 plus 18 r plus 12 r becomes 30 r. So if you further solve it, and this is equal to 225. So if you further keep on solving this, we, this ultimately forms an equation of the form r square 
plus 9R minus 90 equal to 0. Now, this particular equation can be solved by multiple ways, either by breaking into the factors or by uh, applying the Shidra char. If we break this into the factors, this the factors come out to be R minus 6 and R plus 15 equal to 0, which gives the two values of R. One value is 6, one value is minus 15. So clearly minus 15 cannot be taken because that is the radius, that is the length and cannot be in the negative form. So radius value has come out to be 6. Let's see where it matches. It matches with option number B. So R value comes out to be 6 centimeter. Now, there's one more question. In the quadrilateral DABC, whose length of each side is 3 centimeters, so it is a equiquadrilateral D is a point on BC such that BD is equal to half of C. Let us draw the quadrilateral first. So he's saying there's a there's an equilateral DABC. Let us draw it. It can be drawn like this. A here, then B here, <clears throat> then C here, and there is one more called thing called as D. Let us join it like this. This is the D. Okay, in this equilateral whose length of each side is 3 centimeters, so length of each side is just becoming 3 centimeter. Then he said D is a point on BC such that B is a point on BC such that uh, the, the equilateral triangle, so this has to be 3 as well. All the sides are 3. All the sides are 3 like that. Then he says D is a point such that BD is equal to half of CD. So he is clearly mentioned BD is equal to half of CD. Okay, BD is equal to half of CD. <coughs> then what is the length of AD he wants us to calculate? Okay, so let us see the length of BC is equal to 3 centimeter. And see, <coughs> he has said, D is a point on BC, said that BD is equal to half of CD. So if BD is equal to half of CD, then BD will be obviously 1 centimeter and CD will be obviously 2 centimeter because ultimately BC is the sum of BD plus CD only and BD is half of CD. So there is only one combination left out, 1 and 2 and C, the BD is becoming half of CD. The, the two lengths are calculated. Now, this is an equilateral triangle and there is a property for equilateral triangle, triangle that there is a median. If there is a median drawn, the median treat is treated as the altitude also. So let us draw a median. So this is how the median goes. And let us meet, let us make it meet at point E. And the property of equilateral triangle is that median of an equilateral triangle, we can say like that, median of an equilateral triangle, triangle is equal to altitude. Okay, altitude is nothing but perpendicular bisector of the opposite side. So clearly we can say A is also the median and A is also the perpendicular bisector of the other side. So if this is like that, then BE is equal to EC is equal to half of BC. We can clearly write this. B is equal to EC equal to half of BC because this perpendicular bisector or the median has bisected the other two sides equally. So half of BC, that is nothing but 3 by 2 because we already know the BC value as 3. Now, we are supposed to find out AE. Now, AE value will be what? AE will be simply, uh, there's a formula for median calculation. A is nothing but your median in an equilateral triangle. So, median in an equilateral triangle can be, uh, can be calculated by root 3 by 2 into the side length. Root 3 by 2 into the side length. Side length here with us is nothing but uh, 3. So, median A is simply calculated to be 3 root 3 by 2. 2 centimeter. This is the A E length come out to be. Now uh, we can use the right angle triangle here. We have a right angle triangle in which uh, A, D and E is involved. This is also 90 degree. So in a right angle triangle A, D, E, let us use it like this. In a right angle triangle A, D, E, we can use the Pythagoras theorem which is hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. Hypotenuse square is clearly AD, so we can write down AD square is equal to perpendicular is AE square plus base is uh, DE square, okay? So, AD square is equal to AE square plus BD square. So, we know that D is, but we know one more thing that DZ is equal to BE minus ED. D is square is equal to, D is equal to BE minus ED. So, clearly we can find out 3 by 2, that is the B's value minus 1 is equal to 1 by 2 centimeter then ad square can be calculated as see ad square can be calculated as the 3 root 3 by 2 whole square plus 1 by 2 square 1 by 2 whole square that is nothing but ad value can be calculated as root 
27 by 4 plus 1 by 4. If you solve this further, it comes out to be root 28 by 4, which comes out to be root 7. So that is the ultimate length of the AD there. Value is come out to be root 7 centimeter. Let's see where it is available. It is available in option number C becomes the right answer. Now, he says two concentric circle having common center O and chord AB of the outer circle intersect the inner circle at point C and D. So let us draw these two circles first. This is the inner circle and there goes the outer circle. He says there is a center O and there is a chord going AB between or both the circles. So let's say this is, let's say this point is A, this point is B. That is the chord length and this point is C and this point is D. The center's name is O. Okay. Then he says, if the distance of the chord from the center is 3 cm. So distance of the chord from the distance means perpendicular distance. So this has to be a 90 degree and this length is nothing but 3 cm. The outer radius is 13 cm. The radius of the outer circle that is this is given out to be 13 cm and the inner radius is 7 cm. So let us join these two points to give the inner radius as 7 cm. So this is the figure in front of us. Okay, now what we are supposed to do? The length of AC in cm. So we are supposed to find out the length of AC. So clearly all the radius are given to us. So we can clearly see there is going to be a right angle triangle and let's name this point as P. So there is a right angle triangle O P P. In this right angle triangle we can use the Pythagoras theorem which is hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square. Let's use the Pythagoras theorem. So hypotenuse of this particular uh, triangle is, is O B. Hypotenuse of this particular triangle is clearly going to be O B. We are using triangle OPB. So we can say OB square is equal to OP square plus PB square. OP, OB square, OB is nothing but the side 13. So it's going to be 13 square is equal to OP is going to be side 3. So it's going to be 3 square plus PB square. If we solve this further, the PB square comes out to be 169 minus 9, which is nothing but 160, which gives us the PB value as root of 160, which is 4 root 10 centimeters. So we have calculated PB. Now, <clears throat> similar thing can be calculated for triangle OPC. If you see triangle OPC, that is again a right angle triangle. So again, the Pythagoras theorem can be applied in this case, where hypotenuse is the 7 centimeter side. Hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular. Let's say that is 3 square and the base, let's say that is PC square. So these are the three uh, connections that can be made. So clearly PC square can be calculated by uh, 49 square minus 9, that is 40. So PC is, is equal to root 40, which is nothing but 2 root 20 centimeters. So now we know the value of PC. We know the value of PB as well. PC and PB are already there. <clears throat> now what we can what we can see, see AP is equal to PB. Why we can say that? Because in a in a circle, perpendicular drawn from the center of the circle, there's a theorem, then perpendicular drawn <coughs> from the center of the circle to a chord bisects the chord. So here is a perpendicular OP that has been drawn to the chord AB. And so that's why chord AB is getting bisected at point P. So clearly we can say AP is equal to PB. So if AP is equal to PB, so that is all that is already equal to 4 root 10 centimeter. We already calculated. Now, similarly, we can write about the other circle that is CP is equal to PD. That is equal to 2 root 10, 2 10 centimeter. There also the same thing is happening. A center perpendicular is being drawn from the center of the circle. It is bisecting the chord. So clearly we can say AC is equal to AP minus CP from the figure. We can say AC is equal to nothing but AP minus CP. So we can use the AP and CP value to give away the value of AC. That is AP value is 4 root 10 minus CP value is 2 root 10. If you solve this further, this becomes 2 root 10 centimeters. So that is the value of AC that we wanted to calculate. 2 root 2 centimeter, 10 centimeters that is available in option number D and becomes the right answer. <clears throat> now, if an angle measures P degree and Q radians, then which one of the following is correct? Okay, so let us use this. We know the formula of uh, conversion of degree to radian. If you want to convert an angle in degree into the angle in, in, in radians, then there is a particular connection. What is the particular connection? One degree angle is equal to pi by 180 radians. That is a part particular expression. One in degree is equal to pi by 180 radians. So clearly we have been given P degrees and Q radians. So we can write P degrees is equal to pi by 180 Q. So this is what is the connection established. So if we take the the 180 on the other side, we're going to reach to 180p is equal to 
pi into q when a t p is equal to when a t p is equal to pi into q or we can also write this as q is equal to q is equal to or rather pi q is equal to 180 q 180p pi q is equal to 180p and this is what is given in the last option pi pi q is equal to 180p all these arrows are nothing but pi pi q p or pi pi q is equal to 180p that is the option number d becomes the right answer <coughs> now <coughs> the centric of an equilateral triangle abc is g if ab is equal to 9 centimeter the length of ag in centimeter is he's asking for the centric the centric is a point when the when in a triangle a median is drawn centric is a point which which uh, which distributes the median in the ratio 2 is to 1 okay that is what is called a centric let us draw the figure fig, figure first to make it understand clearly okay let's say this is the triangle the triangle's points are a b and c as he said the centric of an equilateral triangle so all the sides are exactly equal okay uh, cent for, for drawing the centric we need to draw them we need to join the medians these medians are also altitude and also angle bisectors because the inequilateral triangle everything is just same so let's say the center is g so this g point is the centric so that's why ag is to g let's say this point is e so ag is to ge will be nothing but 2 is to 1 okay that's what is the centric defined as ag is to ge will be treated as 2 is to 1 that's what would be the centric defined <clears throat> now he says in equilateral triangle now centric and centroid will lie on the same point that's what we said then side s then let us find out how much is going to be the side okay so s side s is going to be 9 centimeter as he said that is a b value is 9 centimeter as already given in the question itself now let us try to find out the height or uh, the the perimeter so in a triangle when in an equilateral triangle, the median is calculated by median is calculated by root 3 by 2 of the side. This is how the median is calculated. Root 3 by 2, 2 times of the side. So median value, that is our AE value is coming out to be root 3 by 2 into the side value is 9, which is nothing but uh, root 3 into 9 by 2. That is, we can write it as 9 root 3 by 2, 9 root 3 by 2. Okay, and because the centric is involved, so centric divides the median in the ratio 2 is to 1. So, we can clearly say that the centric G is dividing the side AE in the ratio 2 is to 1. But we are supposed to know, we are supposed to know the length of AG. So, if AE's length is 9 root 3 by 2, and this A is to be distributed between 2 is to 1, and this 2 part will be our AG, and the 1 part will be our GE. So, how can we find out AG? AG can be found out by 9 root 3 by 2 has got 2 plus 1, 3 parts and out of them the 2 part belongs to AG. So if we solve this, we are getting the AG value as 3 root 3 centimeter. So that, that is what is the length of AG, 3 root 3 centimeter available in option number A. Now find the radius of a circle if the length of a chord in a circle is 70 centimeter long and the perpendicular bisector of the chord from the center is 12 centimeter. Let us draw the circle. Find the radius of a circle. There is a circle drawn. If the length of the chord in a circle is 70 centimeter long, so let us draw a chord. Let us have a center. Okay, so length of the chord is given to be 70 centimeter. Let's say this is the chord. And the perpendicular bisector of the chord from the center is 12 centimeter long. So let's draw a perpendicular bisector like this. If it is a bisector, then these two sides are bisected. We can name these points. This is O, this is A, this is B. We can join the AB side. Then clearly the perpendicular bisector length is also given to us as 12 centimeter. Okay. <clears throat> now we know the value. So, so this particular value is 35, a half of 70. So this is 35, this is 12. So if it is a perpendicular bisector, clearly we know that this is going to be the radius. OB is going to be the, treated as the radius of the circle and it is a right triangle triangle. So in a right triangle triangle, we can always bring the Pythagoras theorem in the scene. Okay, which says hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus the base square in triangle, in triangle O, and let's say this name is P, O, P, B. You can say the hypotenuse is clearly R, base is clearly 35, and the perpendicular is clearly 12. So if you calculate like this, you can say the hypotenuse is R square is equal to perpendicular is 12 square plus base is 35 square. So in this way, you can calculate for the value of radius. The radius square can come out to be 144 plus 35 square. That is 1225. 
So clearly the R values will be under root of 144 plus 1225 is nothing but 1369. So the R value comes out to be 37 centimeters. That's what they had asked for. Radius of the circle is nothing but 37 centimeter. Available in option number D becomes the right answer. <clears throat> now, in the next question, he says the median of triangle ABC meet at G. Let's make the triangle ABC first. So this is the triangle A. B, C. He say median meet at G. So let's draw the median. Median are the bisector of the opposite side. That's what is the median of a triangle. Bisector of the opposite side. Let's name them F, G and E. Uh, rather, we, the, they can be a name common. So let us name this as H. Okay, so that the names are not common. So F, H and G is the uh, G is the, the meet at G. So G is that particular point where all the medians are meeting. If area of triangle is 120 centimeter square. So we can write it down here. Area of triangle A, B, C is 120 centimeter square. Then the area of triangle G, B, C is to be calculated. Okay. That's what is the given in the question. Now, see, there is a theorem that median of a triangle divides, median of a triangle divides the area of the triangle in two equal parts, in two equal parts in two equal parts this is what is the theorem so clearly median a is dividing the area of the triangle in two equal parts that is a b e and a c and so on so clearly we can say that a e b g c f as the a e b g c f are medians so areas are also divided so area of triangle clearly see we can say the half apart area of triangle b g c b c g is equal to area of triangle b g a is equal to area of triangle c g a Okay, this is what we can say. So we can clearly say that area of triangle BGC BCG is equal to one third of triangle ABC because everything is just equal. So three triangle the three triangle three equal triangles area is making the complete area of the bigger triangle ABC. So clearly triangle BCG is half of BCG is exactly one third of triangle of area of triangle ABC. And area of triangle is also given that is 120. So one third of 120 that is nothing but 40 centimeters square that's what he was asked what is the area of the triangle bcg or g or gbc that is same gbc that is same so in triangle gbc's area has come out to be 40 centimeters square and becomes the right answer now i is the in center of a triangle abc if triangle abc is equal to 65 and acb is equal to 55 degree then the value of triangle value of angle bic is to be calculated let us draw the figure first this is how the figure is going Okay, he says I is the in center of the triangle. Okay, so if in center of a triangle is the meeting point of the angle bisectors. Okay, so let's have this triangle as A, B, and C. Okay, he has given the angle B, angle A, B, C to be 65 degree. This value is 65 degree, and he has given this angle A, C, B to be 55 degree. Let's have the angle bisectors and let them meet at a point I. Okay, so this is the point I where the angle bisectors are meeting. So clearly, these two angles are equal and these two angles are also equal because they are angle bisectors. Okay. Now, let us name the uh, angle so that it is easy to understand. Let us name this angle as 1. Let's say this angle is 2. Let's say this angle is 4 and let's say this angle is 3. So, these are the angle name we have created. Okay. Now, as the I is the in center of the triangle, we can use the fact that later on. So, we can say angle 1 is equal to angle 2 because I is the in center and in center uh, and bi is that line which is actually bisecting the angle a b c so angle 1 is completely equal to angle 2 similarly angle 3 is also equal to angle 4 because of the same logic of in center now so if we add all these angle angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 that should be equal to the the total of them that is 65 plus 55 that is nothing but 120 degree so angle 1 and angle 2 are equal so we can just write twice of angle 2 in place of them Similarly, angle 3 plus angle 4 are equal. So, we can just write twice of angle 3 for them is equal to 120 degree. Twice of angle 2 plus twice of angle 3 is 120 degree. So, clearly angle 2 plus angle 3 will be 2 taken common will be 120 degree. So, clearly angle 2 plus angle 3 value will be 60 degree. Angle 2 plus angle 3 will be value will be 60 degree. Now, if you see in triangle IBC and we use the angle sum property, angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle B 
IC has to be 180 degree. That is the angle sum of triangle. 180 degree angle sum of a triangle. So angle 2 plus angle 3 value we already know to be 120 degree. So it's going to be 120 plus angle BIC is equal to 180 degree. Which gives us the angle BIC value as 180 minus 120 that is 180 minus 120 that is 60 degrees. So that is what is was asked. Angle BIC value is 60 degree. Let, let's say what is given. Uh, 180 minus 60 that was to be done. Angle 2 plus angle 3 was 60. Was not 120. Was 60. So angle 180 minus 60 that is. Angle BIC should come as. Angle BIC should, should come as 120 degrees. So that is the right answer. Available in option number B. Becomes the right answer for us. Okay, so the question says find the distance of point minus 8 comma minus 15 from the origin. So if we draw the coordinate axis, the origin lies somewhere here at the center. Minus 8 minus 15 obviously lies in the third quadrant. So let's say this is that point minus 8 comma minus 15. So we are supposed to find out this very distance from these two points. So for this purpose, we can use the distance formula. The distance formula says that the distance between two points can be calculated as distance d can be calculated as under root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square where this x1 x2 and y1 y2 are the coordinates see the x1 y1 and distance between x1 y1 and x2 y2 can be calculated using this particular formula given so in this of our question let's say this is my x1 this is the x1 coordinate this is the y1 coordinate and similarly, this is my x2 coordinate and minus 15 is nothing but y2 coordinate. So these are the coordinate values. Let's put these values inside the distance formula. So distance formula is equal to 0 minus uh, minus 8, 0 minus minus 8 whole square plus 0 minus y2 value is minus 15 minus 15 whole square. That is nothing but under root of 64 plus 225, which is nothing but under root of 289. And the root 2 of 289 is always 17 units. So distance is calculated to be 17 units as an answer. Let's see where it is available in option number B. So it becomes the right answer there. <clears throat> now, in I is the in center of triangle ABC. If angle ABC is equal to 60 degree, BC is equal to 80 degree, then angle BIC is to be calculated. So let's uh, first of all draw the diagram of the triangle. This is, let's say, the triangle. Triangle uh, vertices are A, B, and C. It says angle ABC is 60 degrees. So this is given to be 60 degree. And I is the in center. In center is the center of the angle bisectors. Okay, so let's draw the angle bisector here of angle B, angle bisector of here from uh, angle C. And this is the point I where the angle but the angle bisector of both the angles meet or all the angles rather meet so that this is this I point there. Now the angle C is given out to be 80 degrees. So clearly the angle bisector cuts both the angles in half or part. So we can clearly write that angle IBC is equal to ang half of angle a ABC that is 60 by 2 is equal to 30 degrees. Similarly, angle ICB is equal to half the angle ACB that is 80 by 2 which is equal to 40 degrees this is what we have calculated now let us see let us try to find out the angle IBC that was that is asked then BIC is to be calculated now let's have the angle sum property in the triangle IBC angle sum property says angle IBC plus angle ICB plus angle BIC is equal to 180 degree because the angle sum of a triangle is always 180 degree. Angle sum of a triangle is 180 degree. So here we know the value of IBC and ICB that is 30 degree plus 40 degree plus angle BIC is equal to 180 degree. So angle BIC can be calculated by 180 minus 30 plus 40 that is 70. So is equal to 110 degree. So that is the angle of then the value of the angle BIC. 110 degree available in option number C becomes the right answer. Now, <clears throat> triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR. So let us draw two triangles of the of looking uh, of the similar looking properties. So let's say this is A, B, and C, and this triangle is P, Q, and R. So they are looking similar. He says AB is equal to 4 centimeter, BC is equal to 0.56 centimeter. So, and PQ is equal to 10 centimeter, then find the angle of QR. So in two similar triangles, 
obviously the ratio of the corresponding side is equal so ratio of the corresponding side is ab is corresponding to pq is equal to bc is corresponding to qr so we can say like that and let us put down the values we have all the values so 4 by 0.56 rather 4 by 10 4 by 10 is equal to 0.56 by qr in this way we can find out the qr value the qr value can be calculated by 0.56 into 10 divided by 4 if we calculate this this is going to be 1.4 centimeter so that is the value of qr 1.4 centimeter available in option number b <clears throat> now there's a figure given to us in this figure given above o is the center of the circle angle aod is 106 degree o is the center of the circle angle aod is 106 degree it is already given in the figure what is the angle bcd equal to we are supposed to find out the angle B, C, D. So if you see in this figure itself that uh, angled AOD is already given and see AB is a straight line. We can say AB is a straight line. AB is a straight line. So clearly the angle sum created bit on the straight line is equal to 180 degree. That's that, that means angle AOD plus angle BOD has to be equal to 180 degree. We call it as a linear pair. Okay, AOD is already given to us as 106 plus BOD is uh, yet to be known is equal to 180 degree, which gives us the angle BOD value as 180 minus 106, that is 74 degree. So BOD is calculated to be 74 degree. Now BOD, if you see the figure, the angle BOD has been created by the arc BD on the center. And by the same arc BD, another angle created on the circle is angle BCD. So angle, angle BCD is the angle created by the same arc BD on the circle and BOD is the angle created by same arc BD on the center. We know that angle, we, we, can, we can write like BCD is equal to half of angle BOD. Reason being, angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle is always double the angle subtended by the same arc on any other part of the circle. So by that logic, angle BCD is equal to half of angle BOD. So this way we can calculate angle BCD value as half of angle, half of angle BOD that is 74, which is nothing but 37 degrees. So that is the right answer, 37 degree available in option number D. The x-intercept of the graph 7x minus 3y equal to 2 is. So we know that if there is a line like this, then x-intercept is the is the value where the line cuts the x-axis like this and y-intercept is the value, this is the x-intercept where the line cuts the x-axis and y-intercept is the value where the line cuts the y-axis. This is the y-intercept value. So he says the x-intercept of the graph of 7x minus 3y equal to 2 is to be known. So for x-intercept, for knowing the x-intercept value, what we are supposed to do on the x-intercept point, the y value is always equal to 0. Okay, so we can put this y equal to 0 to find out our x-intercept in the equation itself. The equation is 7x minus 3y equal to 2. If you put y equal to 0, we reach to 7x equal to 2 and which gives us x value as 2 by 7. So that is the x-intercept value only, which is available in option number D, <coughs> becomes the right answer. Now, in the given figure, AB is parallel to CD as it is, it is drawn here. So we can draw AB is parallel to CD line. These two lines are parallel. And angle ABC is 130 degree already given to us. BC is 25 degree that is also seen. EC bisects angle ACD. EC bisects angle ACD. That means this angle is, is equal to this very angle. These two angles are equal. Then find the measure of angle AC. That's what is asked in the question. So if you see that the angle A, that side AB is parallel to CD. So we can say angle ABC plus angle BCD is equal to 180 degree. Why so? Because there is a property that sum of interior angles between parallel line is equal to 180 degree. By that logic, the parallel lines are AB and CD and sum of the interior angles between parallel lines is equal to 180. The interior angles of the parallel lines AB and CD are BCD. Okay, BCA and ECA. So, we can quickly write that angle BCD is equal to 180 minus 130. Okay, <coughs> because 130 is the angle ABC and angle ABC plus angle BCD is equal to 180 degree. So angle BCD can be calculated by 180 minus 130. That is nothing but 50 degree. Okay. Now, how is angle BCD made? If you see the figure clearly, angle BCD is, is, a, is, a, is a blend of angle BCA plus angle ACE 
plus angle ECD. We can see it from the figure also. Okay. Now BCD value we already know is 50 degree is equal to angle BCA. We already know is going to be 25 degree. And he has said that angle AC is equal to ECD. So in place of taking them other two other names, we can quickly write them as plus twice of angle AC because the, both the angle AC and ECD are equal. He has said in the, in the statement itself. So in place of taking them both separately, we can just write twice of angle CE, AC. So this way twice of angle AC comes out to be 50 minus 25, that is 25, which gives us angle AC value as 25 by 2, which is nothing but 12.5 degrees. So that is the right answer. <clears throat> now, find the value of X in the figure given. Okay, we are supposed to find out the X. So clearly we can see that this 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 OA and this OB and this OC are the radius of the circle. So they all are all will be equal. So if you see triangle OAC, there's a there's a triangle seen like this in which these two sides are equal. So it is the isosceles triangle. So if this is isosceles triangle, then the other angle will also be equal to this angle. So this angle is 35 degree. So this very angle is also 35 degree because angle opposite to the equal sides are also equal. So the both the angles are 35 degree. So clearly we can find out that uh, angle OBA is equal to angle OAB is equal to 35 degree. That is an isosceles triangle is equal to 25 degree rather. In this, in the first one, it is angle OBC plus angle OB is equal to 25 degree. We are talking about the left hand side triangle. So clearly, we can find out angle AOB is equal to 180 minus 25 plus 25. Okay, that is nothing but 180 minus 50. That is 130 degree. So that is the measure of angle AOB. But we have to find out the angle X. So the same thing we can apply to the other triangle. That is OAC triangle. So in the same way, angle AOC can be calculated as 180 minus 35 plus 35 because that is an isosceles triangle which is making it equal to angle AOC is equal to 110 degree. Now if you see the center O, angle sum has to be 360 degrees. So clearly we can write angle AOC plus angle AOB plus angle X has to be equal to 360 degree. We already know the value of AOC and AOB. Let's put that there. So 130 plus 110 plus X is equal to 360 degree. So clearly X can be calculated as 360 minus 130 plus 110. That is 240, which is equal to 360 minus 240 is equal to 120 degree. So that is the value of X come out to be 120 degree available in option number <coughs> D. Now. Find the measure of a smaller angle if the supplementary angles are in the ratio 3 to 7. Supplementary angles are the angles. Supplementary angles are the angles where the angle sum is and the angle sum is 180 degree. Okay, those two pair, two angles are said to be supplementary angle whose sum is always equal to 180 degree. So the angles ratio is given as 3 is to 7. So let's say the angles are, let the angles are angle 3x and angle 7x. Now we can clearly write angle sum has to be 180 degrees. So 3x plus 7x has to be 180 degree, which makes it as 10x is equal to 180 degree, which makes x is equal to 18 degree. What are we supposed to know? We are supposed to know the smaller angle. So clearly a smaller angle is 3x. So 3x will be equal to 18 into 3. That is nothing but 54 degrees. So that is the smaller angle out of them. Answer is option D, 54 degree. <coughs> With the following statement, is or are incorrect with respect to the parallelogram. Pair of opposite sides are parallel as well as e are equal. That is right. If di its diagonals bisect each other, that is also right. And if you see the, a figure formed by joining the midpoints of consecutive sides of a quadrant is a parallelogram. That is, also, that is a fact also. A quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of a parallelogram is a square. No, that's, that cannot be right. A quadrilateral formed by joining the midpoints of a parallelogram is always a parallelogram, not a square. So this particular statement is wrong and that's what is the answer option number D. <coughs> now, in triangle ABC, D is parallel BC where D intersect AB and AC at point D and E respectively. So let us draw the triangle first. This is what is our triangle A, B and C. He says D and E join A, B and AC. So let's draw D and E like that. He says D parallel BC. Let's, so let's make the parallel sign. Now, further he says AD is equal to 6 cm. So this value is 6 cm. DB is equal to 12x minus 6. <coughs> DB is equal to 12x minus 6. <coughs> now, the further thing he says is 
a is equal to 2x centimeters. A value he says as 2x centimeters. So where is a? Let us draw the a together. A is nothing but equal to 2x centimeters. This is what is a. And c is equal to 16 minus 2x. So all the values we have drawn in the figure itself, 16 minus 2x. Then find the value of x. So we are supposed to find the value of x. So if you see that <coughs> d intersect, even you see the point d and respectively. So we can say that d and e are the points because of which d is parallel to bc and all the values have been given to us. So clearly we can say that triangle a <coughs> triangle a d e is similar to triangle a b c. Okay, this is a particular theorem that when in a triangle uh, a, a line is drawn joining the joining the two points of a of the two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side, then the bigger triangle is always equal is similar to the smaller side triangle created. So we can say like that triangle AD is similar to triangle ABC. If this happens, then the ratio of the corresponding side is always equal. So we can say AD by AB that is the corresponding sides is equal to AE by EC the corresponding side from the other side. A E by E C. So we know this fact. Now this A D can be operated as A D by D B can be written as A D by A D plus D B. A D by A D plus D B. This is how we can write A B. And similarly, A E by A C can be written as A E plus E C. This is how we can write it. We are writing that because we have been given the values of A D, A E, A D, A E, and E C only. That's why we are breaking them there like that. Now we can directly put the values that we already know is equal to 6 by 6 plus 12 minus x. 12 minus x is the db's value. Is equal to a's value is 2x divided by a's value is 2x and ec value is 16 minus 2x. ec value is 16 minus 2x. <clears throat> we have put the value like this. Let us try to solve this particular equation. Solving this particular equation, equation we are reaching down to 2x square minus 36x plus 96 is equal to 0. If we take the two part common, then it can be x square minus 18x plus 32 equal to 0. We can break down this particular quantity equation by the help of Sridharachar or by the prime factorization also. If we do that, we are getting the prime factors as x equal to 16 and x equal to 2. So these are the two prime factors we are getting. So if you see closely that x equal to 16 is not going to be possible here because x equal to 16 will make the line too much big, which is not possible. And the see, if x equal to 16, then this particular light will become 16 minus 32. That will bring it the answer in the negative sign, which is not possible. So x equal to 16 is completely discarded. <clears throat> the only x value can be taken that is x equal to 2. So that was they had asked, what is the value of x? And the x value has come out to be 2 units. That is the right answer. Now, three interior angles of a, equal, of a quadrilateral are 60, 120, 90. The remaining angles in a circular measure is given by. Okay. <laughs> so, let us draw the quadrilateral first. Let's say the quadrilateral looks like this. <clears throat> now, he says the interior angles are 60, 120, and 90. So, let us start drawing. Let, this one looks like 60. This one looks like 120. And this one looks like 90. And other angle we don't know. So, let's assume the other angle to be X x degrees now he says the remaining angle is, so we know that the angle sum of the quadrilateral is always 360 or 2 pi so we can write angle the sum of angle is always 2 pi so we can write angle 60 plus 90 plus 120 is equal to 2 pi or 180 degree or 2 pi radian so this is equal to 270 degree plus x is equal to 2 pi radian <clears throat> okay so we need to convert this degrees value into radian so that we can match the equation. So as we know, one degree is equal to pi is equal to 180 by pi radian. So by using this, we can connect convert the degrees into pi. So this is equal to 3 pi by 2 plus x is equal to 2 pi radian. So if you solve this, x value comes out to be pi by 2 radians. X value comes out to be pi by 2 radian. Let's see where it is available. It is available in option number B and becomes the right answer like that. Now, in the given figure, angle ADB is equal to 65. Find the angle ACB. So, ADB is given 65. We are supposed to find out this very angle ACB. So, you can see it carefully. Angle ADB has been drawn by the arc AB at the part of a circle. And the angle ACB is also drawn by the same arc AB at the another part of the circle. So the the both the angles have been drawn by the same arc AB. 
so there is a theory that angles in the same segments are also equal angles in same segment <clears throat> angles in same segment are also equal okay so clearly we can say that both the angles have been drawn by the same arc ab so both have to be equal so we can say that angle adb is exactly equal to angle acb if this is happening that angle acb is also equal to 65 degree so that becomes the right answer available in option number a is the right answer <clears throat> now find angle x in triangle xyz xyz the angle bisector of angle y and angle z meet at o and subtend 110 degrees this is the figure already done so they have said the angle bisectors are also there and they are meeting at point o which is making an angle of 110 with the side yz so let us go sequentially let's see in triangle yoz let's see in triangle yoz what is happening so we can say angle oyz plus angle ozy plus angle 110 is equal to 180 degree what we have done we have used the angle sum of a triangle is always 180 degree we have used this particular property now so by this we can understand that sum of angle oyz plus some angle ozy is equal to 180 minus 110 that is 70 degrees so we will use this fact later on now let's come down to the bigger triangle that is triangle xyz if we see in the triangle xyz what do we see angle y plus angle z is equal to twice of angle oyz plus angle ozy but we see angle y plus z is equal to twice of angle oyz because he has only said that angle by the uh, angle x where the angle bisector of y and z meet at point o so angle by oy is the angle bisector of angle y so both the angles of the part created by oy are equal so in place of angle y i can just write angle y is angle y is nothing but sum of angle x y o sum of angle x y o plus plus angle o y z so plus angle o y z so clearly in place of uh, angle y we have written twice of angle o y z and in place of uh, angle z we have written twice of angle o z y because they are bisectors both the angles are also equal okay now let us use this fact angle o y z plus o z y value we already know to be 70 degrees so we can put it here so we can write like angle y plus angle z is equal to twice of 70 degree that is nothing but 140 degree <clears throat> but what is angle y plus angle z angle y plus angle z is nothing but 180 minus angle x or we can write like angle x is equal to 180 minus angle y plus z again the angle sum property has been used up and angle y plus z sum we already know to be 140 degree so it will become like 180 minus 140 degree that is equal to 40 degree so that is what is the measure of angle x 40 degree as given in the question as asked in the question option available is option number c becomes the right answer <clears throat> So the question says radius of two concentric circle is 9 centimeter and 15 centimeter concentric circle are the circle which are drawn from the same center so let's draw two circle with the same center o okay then you say if the radius are 9 centimeter and 15 centimeter so let's say the radius of the smaller circle is 9 and that of the larger circle is 15 so let's have this radius here of the larger circle is 15 so this value is let's say 15 centimeter let's name these points and then if the chord of the greater circle is a tangent to a smaller circle so he says a chord drawn from the uh, from the external circle so let's say this is the chord of the external circle has to become a tangent of the inner circle so that's why it is touching at the outer point only so let's say this point is p we can we can drag this down to further to touch the outer circle and let's say the chord is ab now chord ab is also the tangent chord ab is the chord to the outer circle and the, the same chord ab is the tangent to the inner circle so this is how the figure is getting completed now he says then the length of that chord is we are supposed to find out the length of the chord so let's let's consider op as the perpendicular okay if op is in perpendicular so our triangle opb becomes a right angle triangle so in right triangle uh, triangle OPB we can always apply the Pythagoras theorem you can always apply the Pythagoras theorem which says hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square if we use that <clears throat> in triangle OPB our hypotenuse is going to be OB square is equal to OP square plus PB square okay so OB square we already know is 15 so 15 square is equal to 9 square plus PB square 
okay if you calculate this further this comes out to be 225 minus 81 is equal to pb squares which gives pb value as root of 144 which is nothing but 12 so our pb value has come out to be 12 in this particular calculation now there is a theorem that perpendicular drawn from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord so here we have got a perpendicular op drawn over the chord ab so op has actually bisected the chord ab that means ap is equal to pb by the theorem ap is equal to pb and pb we just calculated to be 12 centimeter so ap is also equal to 12 centimeter we were supposed to know ab and since the ap and pb are the half of ab so ab is equal to double of ap so that is nothing but double of 12 that is 24 centimeter is the length of chord ab that is available in option number a becomes the right answer now he says in the given figure o is the center of the circle with or perpendicular to chord pq or is perpendicular to chord pq as he has said find pr if pq is 5 centimeter so pq is already given to us as 5 centimeter so this whole length is 5 centimeter he wants us to calculate the length of pr clearly there is a theorem perpendicular drawn from the center of the circle to a chord bisects the chord so here the perpendicular OR, perpendicular OR is drawn, that is OR is perpendicular to the chord PQ. And this is a perpendicular drawn from the center of the circle, that is O itself, bisects the chords. That means the chord PQ is bisected at point R. So we can write PR is equal to half of PQ. And <clears throat> how much is PQ? That is already given to as 5. So PR can be easily written as half of 5, which is nothing but... 2.5 centimeters so that is the value of P pr that can come from the theorem statement that is the right answer option number d now find the distance between point 0 0.05 and 70 so let us let us uh, mark somewhere let's say this point is 0 0.05 and let us name these coordinates as x1 comma y1 then there is one more point 0.70 so let us name these coordinates as x2 and y2 so then we can use the distance formula for finding out the distance between two points. So formula says it has to be x1 minus x2 whole square plus <coughs> y1 minus y2 whole square. So we have got all the values of x1, x2, y1, y2. Let's put those values. So it's, it's going to be 0 minus 7 whole square plus 5 minus 0 whole square. That is nothing but under root of 7 square plus 5 square. That is nothing but under root of 49 plus 25 that is under root of 74 if you calculate the under root of 74 that comes out to be exactly 8.6 units so that has to be the right answer the distance between the two points is <coughs> exactly 8.6 units the question says find the length of the <coughs> longest chord that can be inscribed in a circle with radius 7.5 okay so let's draw the figure so this is the center center O with a circle radius 7.5 centimeter. So the radius is 7.5 centimeter here. Now he wants us to find out, find the length of the longest chord. So by the fact we can understand the longest chord in a circle, longest chord in a circle is said to be the diameter of the circle. Longest chord in the circle is always the diameter and diameter is nothing but twice of radius. We already know the radius value. So it has to be twice of the 7.5 which is 15 centimeter the longest chord is always a diameter which value is whose value is 15 centimeter becomes the right answer <coughs> now in this question he says find the measure of angle acd okay all the figure has been drawn okay so let us begin we have to find out the angle acd that is we have to supposed to find out this very angle so let us take down one by one let us see in triangle ebd what you can see angle ebd can be calculated by 180 minus 94 minus 15 degree why so <clears throat> because triangle ebd in triangle angle ebd angle ebd in this very figure angle ebd is is one of the one of the angle of the triangle and the angle sum property in triangle ebd will say that angle ebd plus angle plus angle bed plus angle ed B is equal to 180 degree by that we can say that angle ebd is equal to 180 minus the other two angle sum which is 94 and 15 as given in the question itself so this way we can find out the angle ebd is equal to 71 degree okay now let us see in triangle abc the same thing we can do it here angle acb can be found out as 180 minus 45 
minus 71 degree. Again, the angle sum has come in the picture. Angle ABC in this angle, angle ACB is to be found out. So this very angle ACB is the, if, if you do the sum angle ACB plus angle ABC plus angle A has to be 180 degree. So uh, clearly ACB value is 180 minus 45 minus 71. This, this is calculated to be angles 64 degree. So that is what is the value of angle ACB. Now, here you can see angle ACD is the, the angle ACD can be the sum of these two angles. Angle ACD is actually the exterior angle of other two angles. Okay, and see angle ACD is the exterior angle of the other two angles. That means angle ACD is equal to sum of the internal angles. Or always in a triangle, the external angle is equal to the sum of the two opposing interior angles. So 45 plus 71 degree, which is nothing but 1160. So that is the measure of angle ACD. 116 degree available in option number C becomes the right answer. Now, the question says, in the figure given above, a circle is inscribed in the quadrilateral ABCD. Given that BC is equal to 38 centimeter, so BC is in all 38, so we can mark it here. This BC value is 38 centimeter in all. And QB is 27 centimeter, so QB is marked as 27 from here to here is 27. Then he says, uh, DC is equal to QB is equal to 27 that we have already marked DC is equal to 25. So this whole DC from here to air is 25 centimeters. Then he says AD is perpendicular to BC. The uh, line AD is perpendicular to BC. The symbol is represented already. Then uh, what is the radius of the circle? So we are clearly we are supposed to find out the radius of the circle. So let us join uh, O with the with the center point here and draw the perpendiculars like this. Let us join it like this. And let us join the other point as the perpendicular here. Let's name this point as T and the name is this point is M. Okay, now we need to see this figure clearly. So you can see that, <clears throat> we can see here, here that the if you see the triangle TDM, if you see the triangle TDM, let's, let's join these two points also. If you see the triangle TDM here, then you can see that angle D is already given to be 90 degree. We can write it here. Angle D is already given to be 90 degree. We are talking about triangle, talking about triangle TDM. In triangle TDM, angle D is already 90 degree. Then TD is equal to DM. TD is equal to DM. Why so? Because there is a theorem that the tangents drawn from any point of the circle outside the circle are, are equal in length. And D is the point from where the tangent TD and TM have been joined to the circle. Okay, so the length of these two tangents will be equal because they have been drawn from the same external point D. So that's why by the theorem the TD is equal to DM. Okay, so this much we have drawn. Now if TD is equal to DM, then obviously triangle TDM becomes a, becomes a right angle triangle at D. So in this right angle triangle, we can apply the Pythagoras theorem. In this right angle diagonal, we can apply the Pythagoras theorem, which says hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square. In triangle TDM, the figure of the triangle TDM looks like this. This is D, this is T, and this is M. So clearly the hypotenuse is TM. So we can write down TM square is equal to TD square plus DM square. TD square plus DM square. This we can write. So <clears throat> TD and DM are equal, and the value of TD and DM is given at, out to us as uh, TD and DM is given out to us as 14 centimeter. Okay, TD and DM is given out to us as 14 centimeter. So clearly we can write down here, TM square is equal to 14 square plus 14 square. Okay, so the value comes out to be TM square is equal to, TM square is equal to ultimately twice of 14 square, that is twice of 196. So TM square is equal to twice of 196, which is nothing but 14 root two. So TM value has come out to be, 14 root 2. So TM is 14 root 2. That's what we have calculated. Now, we have to see now the triangle OTM. If you see the triangle OTM, what do you observe? That OT and OM are actually the radius of the circle. OT is equal to AM, OM because they both are the radius of the circle already. They have been joining the center. So these two sides are equal. Let us assume this radius to be R. Okay, so that we can use it. Now you can again see the triangle OTM. The triangle OTM has to be again a 90 degree because we have created a 90 degree here. So we can again apply a Pythagoras theorem in which R square plus R square that is base and perpendicular of uh, right angle triangle OTM is equal to the, the hypotenuse of the triangle OTM is nothing but 
tm so tm square okay this is how the things are created now we can say clearly say that tm value is already known to us 14 root 2 so we can put the value here so here it becomes 2r square is equal to tm value is nothing but 14 root 2 okay tm value is nothing but 14 root 2 whole square which gives us the r square value as 14 uh, that r square value as 196.2 divided by 2 which gives us r square is equal to 196.2 divided by 2 which gives us r square as 196 and which gives us r values as 14 centimeter only so this is what it has been drawn r value is coming out to be 14 centimeter that is the radius value that is available in option number b now the question says two circle intersect each other at point p and q p a and p b are two diameters so let's draw the diagrams first there are two circles let us draw the two circles there so this is becoming a first circle then there is one more circle with us let us draw one more circle like this so these are the two circles he say the two circle intersect each other at point p and q so let the points are p here and q is this one then he says P A and P B are two diameters. So let's draw the two diameters taking the center with them. So this is P A and this becomes P B like this. So this is P A. Let's say the center is here O. Let's say the center of this circle is O dash. Okay. And on the downside there is Q. So we can join this A B also. Okay. We can join this A B also here like this. Now what he's saying P and P B are diameter then angle A Q B's value is to be found out. So we can see that P and P B are uh, diameters of the circle. Now, if PA and PB are diameter of a circle, then the each PA and PB cut the circle into two equal half because they are diameters. So we have a if we create the angle like this, so angle PQA, if we talk about angle PQA, let us draw it also. Okay, let's draw the line PQ, then angle PQA, this angle PQA will be equal to half or will be equal to 90 degree. Why so? Because it is the angle of a semicircle. There is a theorem angle in a semicircle is always 90 degree. Why it is a semicircle angle? Because AP is a diameter and it has cut the whole circle in two equal halves. So clearly angle PQA is 90 degree. We can call it as angle in a semicircle. Okay, angle in a semicircle. Similarly, if you talk about the other angle that is angle PQB, which is this one. Angle PQB is also 90 degree because that is also angle in a semicircle. Because PB has a diameter and PB has made the two circles cut into two equal halves. So we can clearly say PQ and PQB are both 90 degree equal to equal to 90 degree. Now if we add angle PQA plus angle PQB, so that will be equal to angle AQB that was asked in the question. And if you put the values of PQ and PQB, the angle AQB comes out to be 90 plus 90, that is 180 degree. So that's what was asked in the question. What is the value of angle AQB? It is nothing but 180 degree, that is AB is a straight line. Now, there's a figure there. In this figure given above, YZ is parallel to MN. They say YZ is parallel to MN. Let us show them. This is YZ and this is parallel to MN like this. YZ is parallel to MN and XY is parallel to LM. They have shown this XY is parallel to uh, XY is parallel to LM. So we can see that LM is there. So this is LM. <coughs> XY is parallel to LM <coughs> and XZ is parallel to LN. Similarly, the third part is also equal XZ. XZ is parallel to LN. So these three sides are parallel like that. Then MY is. Okay, so we need to know the MY. What is MY? So we can clearly write here YZ is parallel to MN. And XY is parallel to LM as given in the question cell. And the third thing that is given is XZ is parallel to LN. These are the three things given to us. Then he asks that what is the value of MY? So clearly we can say that all these sides are parallel. Then there's a theorem that when in a triangle, the line joining two side, line joining any two points of the circle, any two points of the two sides of the, of the triangle, when the, like these two lines are parallel, then the area of the bigger triangle is always double the triangle of the small triangle, double the area of the small triangle. So clearly we can write that ZY, ZY is equal to half of MN. Clearly we can write by using this theorem that ZY is equal to, where is ZY? This is our ZY is equal to half of MN, okay? So ZY is equal to half of N, this is by the theorem, okay? But we by this we can say ZY is equal to half of MN. So by with this we can say, Clearly, mx is equal to xn. 
we can say that mx is equal to xn okay because they have cut into the equal equal areas okay similarly we know that ly can also be equal to yn by the similar law ly is also equal to yn okay ly is there this this is ly is equal, also equal to yn because the area is cut into equal halves so now we can say lz in the same logic we can say lz is equal to zm where is our lz this is lz is equal to zm because uh, we can say that this is the equal areas now by this result we can say my divides by this result we can say my divides line ln into two equal parts this is the result that has come out my divides the line ln into two equal parts which which means that my is treated as the median median of a triangle is something that divides the opposite side into two equal halves so this opposite side is this side is dividing the opposite side lm into two equal halves so clearly we can say the my is the median of the triangle okay my is the median of the triangle l m n let's see where this result is available this result is available in the option number a itself is becoming the right answer now an equilateral triangle TQR is drawn inside a square PQRS. Okay, so there is a square. Okay, let's make that square like that. So this is the square over there. An equilateral triangle TQR is drawn inside it. Okay, an equilateral triangle is drawn inside PQRS. So let us draw that equilateral triangle something. So the square is PQRS. Let's name the points P, Q, R, and S. And there's an equilateral triangle drawn like this. It is inside, so we can draw it, draw it like this. This can be drawn by another, any other means also. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the thing in front of us. Now, he says the triangle is equivalent, equilateral. So if the triangle is equilateral, then all the angles will be equal to 60 degree. All the sides will be equal, and all the angles will also be equal. So each angle will be 60, 60, 60, so that the sum of these angles become actually equal to 180 degree. And let's say this is the point T. <coughs> now, then he says, the the value of the angle pts in degree so we need to know the value of angle pts that is pts angle is to be created like this so this is the figure pts angle is to be known now <coughs> we can say that <coughs> angle q let's talk about angle q angle q is equal to 90 degree okay why so angle q is equal to 90 degree and we can also say that angle pqt is equal to 90 minus 60 why angle q is 90 degree because angle q is the angle of the square angle of the square is always 90 degree so in this way we can find out the value of angle pqt to be 90 minus 60 that is 30 degree so we can clearly write this very angle is 30 degree <clears throat> now let us see further but we know that angle pqt is going to be a isosceles triangle what we say angle what we say is, is going to be triangle pqt is going to be as is an as isosceles triangle is an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is the triangle in which the two sides are always equal in a triangle. Okay, so clearly we can write angle PQT plus angle QTP plus angle TPQ is equal to 180 degree because the angle sum of a triangle is always 180 degree. So we can say angle PQT plus we don't know the measure of angle QTP and TPQ. So let us assume that to be X. So it's going to be X plus X is equal to 180 degree. Okay, angle QTP is equal to angle TPQ because isosceles, uh, this is an equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle rather. So now 2x value comes out to be 180 minus PQT value we already know to be 30, we just calculated here. So 2x value comes out to be 150 which gives x value as 75 that is 150 by 2. Now if you see angle PTS, okay, see if you see the angle PTS, <clears throat> this angle PTS is a part of a complete circle whose sum is going to be always 360 degree. So angle PTS can be calculated. Angle PTS can be calculated as 360 minus sum of rest of the angles. That is 75 plus 75 plus 60. Okay. So if you solve this further, this comes out to be angle PTS comes out to be 360 minus 210. That is nothing but 150 degrees. So that is going to be the right answer for angle PTS. 150 degree it is available in option number b <clears throat> now the question is in the graph of equation 2x plus 3y equal to 6 form a triangle with coordinate axis so let us draw the figure so this is the uh, coordinate axis okay this is x axis this is y axis and there's a line let's say the line looks like this the line lines equation is given as 2x plus 3y is equal to 6 this is the line equation given 
to form a triangle of with coordinate axis. So here it is making a triangle with coordinate axis. Then the area of the triangle will be. So we need to know the area of the triangle. Okay. Since this line forms and forms a, a triangle, so clearly the coordinates can be decided. Okay. So this particular line is cutting the x axis at this point, at this very point. So here the y coordinate becomes zero. At this point, y coordinate becomes zero. <clears throat> Similarly, this line is cutting the y axis at this point. So at this point, the x coordinate is equal to zero. Okay. Now, so we can find out that x is equal to zero. When, when we put x equal to zero in the equation itself, let us put back the x equal to zero value in the equation. If you put x equal to zero in the equation, then 3y is equal to six, which gives y value as two. So when x equal to zero, y is equal to two. So the coordinate of this point is zero two. Now let's go to the other point where the x axis lies. Where at this point, y equal to zero. So if in this equation, you put y equal to zero, you get two x is equal to six. That is x value is three. So this point is nothing but three zero. This particular point is nothing but three zero. Three on the x-axis, zero on the y. Now we suppose he wants us to calculate the area of the triangle. So now if three and zero are calculated as the coordinates, so length of this line, this is becoming x intercept. Length of this line is three units, and this point is zero two. So length of this very line is two units. So here comes the triangle in front of us. This is the two unit length. This is the three unit length. And this is the hypotenuse length that we don't know. Obviously, two is going to be the height of this triangle because this is a 90 degree. So we are supposed to find out the area. So we can say area of triangle is always equal to half of base into height. Base of this triangle is nothing but three. So half of three into height is nothing but two. So we can calculate this. The area comes out to be three square unit. So that is the right answer. Area of the particular triangle that has been formed by the line joining the coordinate axis is nothing but three square units. It is available in option number B becomes the right answer.